Hello everybody, this is Rich from the Garden State Hip Hop Hour. Today we're doing a special show actually out here in New York with legendary UK rapper as well as star of Top Boy. How you doing? Well going. You right? Ah uh, yeah man. Be <laughs> yeah. Um Kano, we appreciate you coming out here. Obviously you're in New York what just a few days now? Yeah, I've been here a few days, you know, it's been in just a shy of a week here, so it's been cool man. How are you Energy's enjoying it out here? It's cool. <laughs> good man, energy's good. I've been here before a few times, but I know it feels um, different now. A couple of projects being received quite well, so um, energy feels good, man. Yeah, and you just dropped a new project, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hoodies All Summer? Hoodies All Summer album. Mm. How's the reception been so far? Because it's been like three years since you dropped the last album. Yeah, three years. Um, you know, it was a little bit of time, but you know, that time was necessary to you know produce the album that is. And I don't know, it's like the reception has been... <laughs> it's yeah. been great, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed though in the yeah. album, this album, when I was trying to look through your old music, but this album, you really went with like two producers throughout it, Blue May and uh, Jody Milner. Yeah, yeah, and not two separately as well, just took it together. Oh, they're together? Okay, yeah, on Spotify, listen separately, but they're actually uh, like a producer. Yeah, so group. it was like literally three of us in a room, um, you know, we, we created this album from, from scratch, you know what I mean? Um, and. Yeah, I've never really, I've never really done that before, and and it wasn't the intention, you know, to begin with. It was, it, you know, I, I thought maybe we'll start that way, and then I'll work with other people and whatever. But it just wasn't that kind of thing. It wasn't a project that someone could like send a beat, and I'd be like, yeah, that fits with, you know, what I mean, it wasn't no sending beats. Every piece of music was, um, was you know, purpose, purpose built. Um, yeah, so it just turned out that way, and you know, and. You know, it adds to the whole thing and the cohesiveness, cohesiveness of the story and the journey and, you know, that kind of development of the record. So, yeah, I think it was beautiful that it went that way. Yeah, I always find that, like, very interesting because it's like you're trusting your entire body of work for that pro one project. Well, one set of people and you do, like you said, you build that chemistry and it becomes their project almost just as much as it is 100%, your project. 100%. And, and we, we only worked to the, It wasn't like... Um, you know, we only worked when we all could get in the room together. It wasn't like uh, they'll be working on something and I'll be doing something else and they would like send me idea. It wasn't that, it was like we, you know, it was all together. And, and yeah, they definitely have ownership over the project because you know, it, it's, it's ours, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, our, it's our baby and, and things just developed as it went. And, you know, we probably even started making the record before we started making the record. This was, you know, Blue May and Jody, they both play in a band with me. Okay. So while touring the last album, while we was on tour, we was talking about things and how, you know what I mean, how it could sound and this is the kind of thing we want to achieve. And just had a lot of discussion and conversation and that was like for months, you know what I mean? Okay. So this album started to form before I even spat a lyric or, or anything. Yeah. And speaking of tour, you just did the Royal Albert Hall, right? Yeah. And I got to saw some clips of it. It just you really went all out. You had the full orchestra there. Yeah, yeah. You had the all white on there. And it's funny because I saw a caption it was like, uh, "This is not Kanye's uh, Sunday service." Because you kind of like had that gospel and you had that look. Like, what was the experience of doing that arena? I read somewhere another interview you did that you were trying to go to arenas that you know grind music and hip hop from the UK. They don't really usually do those kind of events at those halls. Yeah. So for you to break into that and do such a big show at such a high level. Yeah, it was like a, it's a real moment for me, but it felt like a moment for us all as well. You know, I mean, a lot of people were excited about it. It's something that I've always wanted to do and just play that venue. Um, yeah, and it's not often that our type of music is represented in a place like that. Um, but it was also about not just uh, fitting in there, you know what I mean? It was about standing out there, bringing what we do to that place, and it was shaky, you know what I mean? And they have like the box, like crazy, like expensive boxes that people don't whatever, and you can sell the boxes for like a lot of money or yeah. whatever. But what we decided to do was, we're just gonna sell each seat in the box as a regular ticket. So if I could just buy a ticket for the same price or whatever, 35 or whatever it is, pounds, and just end up in one yeah. of these royal boxes, you know? Yeah, and just like the moment, like you're bringing the fans, and like you said, you're bringing yeah, yeah. like something not typical to this place. Yeah, yeah. So again, even with the boxing, it sounds like you try to go not the typical route by just yeah, making yeah, yeah. it like available. Yeah, yeah. And like, I feel like that's a nod to the fans who have supported you to this point. Of course, and that's what it's about. It's a celebration, you know? It's a celebration of, you know, my career, but also how far we've 
come and you know and and to put on the show like that and yeah I did go all out and it was like 44 people on stage <laughs> yeah you I'm had the whole I'm not sure how often I could do that but um yeah it, it, it was it was that mix in London and he said like the you know the string orchestra then the you know choir that bring that just real unity and yeah. togetherness but then the steel pans which is the Caribbean <laughs> influence on England you know what I mean and they have the carnival and like we brought that there and just yeah it just felt real then I got my guys like D-Double and Getz who's like from the grand roots yeah. and, you know what I mean it just real man gigs and, right. and speaking about D-Double and Getz like I was watching Trouble the video yeah, Trouble yeah, yeah. and it's not even a music video it's more like a cinematic mm -hmm. and what really stood out to me first off it's a very powerful video Everything, you know, obviously, I'm not from the UK, but we all know about, you know, the knifing yeah, yeah. and things like that. And just the way you presented it, I felt like, because I was talking earlier and I was like, when he started, like, the kid was going out into the streets and the things started happening, you switch from the angle to the same way we would see on an Instagram feed or a Snapchat feed. Yeah. So it just added to that whole realism and added more to how powerful you presented it. It's because that's exactly how myself or you or someone yeah, else yeah. might find out about it. Like, oh, look at this Instagram video when it goes around. Yeah. Was that kind of like the idea behind yeah, it? Yeah, that or? exactly was the idea. Just to, as soon as he shuts that door from that point up until the funeral. And it was and 90 seconds. Even was, in parts was, of the funeral. It was 90 seconds. Yeah, it, it was like... It, it, it had to be documented in the way it would happen in real world, you know what I mean? So we was conscious not to just cut to angles where it would be like, how would you get that angle? You know yeah. what I mean? So we had people with phones like in... Yeah, you had like, it looked like flats. second floors, first Yeah, we floors. had second floors and we had like um, ground level, which a witness could be walking past, but we couldn't even cut to that. Um, we couldn't even cut to those angles while it would be happening because someone just wouldn't be walking yeah. down the street filming this incident. They would only film it once something has happened. Yeah. So we were very conscious of making it real, you know what I mean? Making it um, feel authentic and uh, and showing it through the POV of a kid which they spend basically their whole life on the phones. They film everything. Yeah, that's why, like, that's why I thought it was so powerful. Yeah, and, and that's how we would find out about something or that's how their generation would um, document something. Um, so yeah, that, that was an important thing, but also the kid at home, it just showed that he wasn't a quote unquote typical road uh, gangster, you know what I mean? I know, yeah, that's how they yeah. present everything. That's, that's how they happens. present when something, exactly, you know what I mean? Um, so that was important to me. And then to the speech again, just that connection um, and that reach out to to, to the youth and that. And, um, and then going to this, the wake, which was like, Jamaican style celebration of life, and then obviously that was the my way in. Yeah, that really stood Asia, out. Like you know how you presented it, it wasn't like the song was real. The song was powerful. You presented real things, but the beat was a little more up tempo. The like you said, the wake was almost like a celebration as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you had the elder. I'm not sure the guy's name, but like more of like he was some like an elder statesman who was like, I can't tell you what to do, yeah, yeah. but you know, just seeing like let's prevent this cycle. And even the way it ended with the shot, I believe it's the sister, and then yeah. it's like she's just, as all this is going around her, she's just sitting in the corner, yeah. just almost like lost in thought, I guess, or yeah. just lost in the moment. And yeah. just, like the whole presentation, it was just like, wow, this is just like, it's not just a music video, it was like, yeah. uh, just a piece. No, thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I spent a lot of time on that. It's one of the toughest things I've done, so yeah, appreciate it. And the whole album itself, um, again, I've watched a ton of interviews just to prepare for this, and. I saw like your last album, Made in Manor, was more about your personal stories, the ones that you said you couldn't even tell your friends, and this album was, you just spoke about more of the issues going on around you. Yeah, this is more outward looking, you know what I mean? Um, it's just turned in the lens, you know? It's way, because when you, when you make a project like that, like my last one, and you reveal so much, um, it, you know, it's tough to go back there sometimes. You think, oh, what else can I say? What else, what else can I reveal? And, you know what I mean? I mean, it, it could happen at some point, but I felt like, you know, like a year after making the album, when we started making this new one, it was too soon. You know yeah. What I mean? um, so we, we started making the music, and that was progressing in a good direction. But lyrically, I just didn't have it yet. I just didn't know what to say. And it wasn't until I reversed that lens um, that I realized, wow, there's, there's so much things I could speak about. Um, and I say that that album is more like me, and, and this album is like about us all. You know? And I think you really get that point across with the song with Popkin, mm -hmm. where the song is like, you put, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting, but you put we, not me, yeah, in the title. Yeah, we down. Yeah, yeah, we. Like, and I was like, oh, that, that really just emphasizes even more on the idea. This is not 
this is not a Kano album. This is not. This yeah, is yeah. our album. This is our story. When I saw specifically that you put we, yeah, and yeah. words have such a powerful they do thing man. that they just do. we, you know, they can't hold we down. You know that that we that last line of the album. If we don't hold each other down, we won't. You know what I mean? I'm not even on the last line of the album. I had to have the choir to sing that a cappella. I'm not even on the cover of this album. Then my name is nowhere to be seen <laughs> on the cover. You know what I mean? It's it's like it's bigger than. Just that, and so much of rap is about me, me. Look what car I got, and look what this. Yeah. and that's cool as well. And that makes for some good club tunes, and you know, it's aspirational for the hustlers to wanting to, you know, what I mean, um, do better in life. Um, it gives us a relief. You know, you go to the club, let your hair down after you've been working. Yeah, all, week. all that <laughs> shit. I get it. It's important. It's important. But there's other things that are important too, and and shit that can uh, impact someone's life in a in a real way, and. If done well musically, can last the test of time. Yeah, and like again, I was gonna say you make you point out you make timeless music, and that's why you do take your time. Like three years, ten songs, people might be yeah. like, you know, that's a little crazy. But <laughs> you said, you know, and the album before that was six years, so that's just even like a test a testament to your fan base, even, yeah. and how you do an event like you said at the Royal Albert Hall, and you make it like accessible for everybody. Yeah. So it's like you stuck with me almost, and now I'm doing this for you and for us, and we're in yeah. this together. Yeah, it's a payback, you know, and and it's like I appreciate that love and and now I've had like some years in the game I can I can literally see the people that have grown with me you know what I mean I see a, a younger audience there as well people that are kind of um, you know I see like people that are you know 19 years old and they're singing like P's and Q's you know back to back so obviously <laughs> they've done some research and that but I also see the people that have grown with me you know what yeah. I mean? so when I'm talking certain things or you know relationship song that where I will see people like yo man I feel what you're saying there I've kind of gone through the same situation and blah 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 it touches them differently yeah. you know what I mean there are loads of like Jay-Z tunes I didn't get at the time and now I listen to them and I'm like oh wow the same the same yeah they I resonate with you different like it's music it reaches you at the, at the right time whenever it's whenever it's supposed to hit you it will you know what yeah, I mean and if it ain't time. now and even trouble like some some young kids that are in that life might think Nah, man, I ain't ready to think about squashing no beef and whatever because it's too, it's too new. It's too yeah. My friend just died last month and da da da, and I want to do this and that's fine. But there will come a time where they think differently. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and that happens with time and growth and experience. Um, and then that would resonate with them. Yeah. But that music will always be there. You know. So for them to just go back and listen to. The tune where I was talking about the Ferrari, or you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. They can't get nothing from that, but this will always be there for people at some point. Yeah, it's an album of growth, and and to point out, like you said, Jay Z, it's like when Jay Z dropped four four four. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. like you, you get to see, we got to see you when you started off, and like you said, rapping yeah. about Ferraris, mm -hmm. you're fun. Obviously, you're younger, and then obviously we grow as people, and now this is more like you know, like a grown album. Like yeah, yeah. you appreciate it as you get older, and like you said, to stand the test of time. Yeah, yeah. They may not understand it now if they're twenty years old or twenty one yeah, yeah. years old. But maybe when they do hit 31, 32 and they look back yeah, and yeah. think about the social problems, it's like, yeah, oh yeah. wow, Kano was really talking like a message. Yeah, yeah. So really just... You know, it's important. And then you have, just outside of even social influence, you have the influence on today's UK music, the uh, drill. Uh, like they can't, like the grime, the influence from grime. And yeah, you're starting yeah. to see that influence even leak into America. You have an artist like Pop Smoke, mm -hmm. who's very popular in New York, one of my favorite artists, and his album is produced by 808 Mellow Beats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That tune has got that big, but they love this tune over there. That work at home, you know what I mean? That's ringing up. But I think, like, um, you know, as time's gone on, and uh, like it, it was like a, it was just like an American music had just <laughs> kind of, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come over to the UK, and everyone was, it was America and everything. Listen, turn on the radio. And like, we didn't even really get a chance, get a look in, you know what I mean? Um, and we've always, you know, took inspiration from American hip hop and, you know, loved those guys and big those guys up and whatever. But it was a, it was one way traffic, you know what I mean? And now I think there's more of a, a synergy and a mutual respect and a give and take thing and collaborations are happening, you know what I mean? It takes it took it took time. But um, now I think people over here like look at what we're doing over there and they realise that we've got our own thing going on. And maybe that's what it's about. It was like maybe at times, like UK music was trying too hard to be American or impress America or whatever, and now it's like we're doing our own thing and the whole grind movement and you know, things popping over there. People can really see it and respect it, and they're gravitating towards it. 
and collaborations are happening and I think things will just begin to emerge even more as time moves forward. Yeah, and like you said, and the rece- well, how's your reception been then here now that you said now it's a little more back and forth versus maybe your prior albums at the timing? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's cool, man. Like, I, yeah, I've been out here, done a couple radio shows and whatnot, and I know a lot of DJ. Like, there's been some DJ, like Who Kid and Cypher Sounds, to be honest, they've been on it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of us been, you know, putting us on the mixtapes and supporting us over there, and just because. I guess they maybe told a lot. I know who kid told the fifty, so he's been around. You know what I mean? Regime. People that <laughs> leave the country, like they get to see what's working in other places and appreciate the music. Um, but yeah, a lot of newer people are, uh, are beginning to understand about us and support us. And the people that don't know us, they're intrigued and they're interested. So I'm having some good conversations or whatnot. But yeah, it definitely feels different. More people know me now, and obviously I have the other thing going on top boy as well. So. It's just um, the energy is good over here right now. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Top Boy, one of the hottest shows out, how much has that character has either leaked into the music or you as a person leaked into the character? I think me as a person definitely leaks into the character. Like, you know, I think, you know, although you, you, you're portraying somebody else, you have to bring your personal experience to it, you know what I mean? And, and maybe you can't relate in terms of like, maybe you've never fucking killed someone or whatever <laughs> but it's just that emotion that yeah, you can bring to it you know so that hurt and that loss and that you know it's more like the other side where he's um, you know the, the, the loss with Jason and um, the, the longing for a family but he's kind of stuck in this world and that's all he knows you know what I mean and you know, relationship you know, and like all of that kind of stuff you know you bring as much as you can of your personal experience to the role and then you reach out to other people. Like I, I would kind of call people and you know and, and, and see what they think as well. Or if you ever dealt with a situation like this, you know what I mean. I'm always on a like a on a search for truth, mm-hmm. you know, and authenticity. <laughs> yeah, and, and me and yeah, me and Ashley are always like, you know, we'll read something and it might be cool, but it's like, yo, I don't, I don't think this is, you know what I mean. And I really believe this. And I think it could go this way and blah, blah, blah. And you have your thing. Sometimes you win some battles, sometimes you lose some. But when I feel strongly about something that's character driven, like, you know, it, it, it has to be that way. I can't, I can't do it any other way. You know, it has to be real. And it comes through in the character. And the show, obviously, back for season three now. Mm-hmm. Exciting, a six year break. Yeah. But um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I do appreciate the interview. This is Kano. You can find his new album, Hoodies All Summer. Yeah, man. Spotify, Apple Music, Title, everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, everywhere everywhere hoodies all summer check that one out and go back and check out the other five (laughs) (laughs) where i appreciate it my guy Uh, respect